Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on X Twitter at Movies TV Mad and on Instagram and on Freds at Movies TV Mad X. A very warm welcome to Tuesday's edition of the Movies TV Mad Daily. I'm sitting here on a Monday morning around 11.21. That's 21 minutes past nine UK time because we're more forward than you in the UK. We're two hours ahead of you. We're smart, aren't we? Anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're talking Doctor Who again. And we're talking about the ratings because the ratings have gone slightly up. That will upset certain people, I'm sure. Um, but not too up, by the way. So if you want Doctor Who to fail, it's, you know, it's not a win. It's not a win and we'll discuss it very shortly. But it's interesting that the Millie Gibson-led episode got more viewers than last week's Shooty Gatwar episode. Um, lead episode. Now, I'm going to be talking about that today. I'm going to be asking you, is Shuti Gatwa a good doctor? Forget the hype. Is he a good doctor? Period. You a Doctor Who fan who's been watching Doctor Who for many, many years. I've been watching Doctor Who since Peter Davis and I skipped Colin Baker. I skipped Sylvester McCoy and watched the movie, which I loved once and all. But I've been watching Doctor Who a great number of years. So... As you, you and I, are, you know, are more versed in being able to know what makes a great doctor and what makes a bad doctor. So we'll be getting into it. So the, 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 so the overnight numbers for Doctor Who this week for the episode uh, 73 Yards were 260 million. 260 million. So um, that's a lot more than the 2.04 Doctor Who got for Boom, which I believe is a much better episode than 73 Yards, in my opinion. It was flawed. It wasn't one of Moffat's. It's not Moffat's best Doctor Who work, but it was a very good episode, and I enjoyed it. There was commentary and messaging I agreed with, and messaging and commentary I didn't agree with within that episode. I don't have to agree with what someone's saying. There doesn't have to be messaging every week. Well, 73 yards for yet another episode of RTD2 has some messaging. And it's the same old thing. But this time we had a Welsh Donald Trump, Rishi Sunak, whatever, right? So why did more people come in to see Doctor Who this week than they did last week on the live broadcast? Well, I think it's because I'm... Um, I think that maybe some people would rather watch Millie Gibson than Shooty Gatwa because Millie Gibson hasn't gaslit the audience, hasn't called um, white people mediocre, things like that. Things like that don't help Shooty because it is a popularity contest at the end of the day. It's not just about your qualities as an actor. And of course, I think that Shooty Gatwa is a very talented young man and his talents did work in sex education, but he had a small little recurring role on that show. What he did on that show, he had little responsibility and he wasn't carrying an iconic 60 plus year property. So there's a difference, isn't there now? So Millie Gibson has been in Coronation Street for many, many years. Everyone knows Millie. Everyone knows she's a strong, powerful young actor. She's been working since she was a child. And in the interviews and marketing for this current series of Doctor Who, we don't know if it's series 14, series 1, series 41. I don't know where we are. Nobody does. And by the way, that could be the reason for the low ratings. People are confused. Why is it series 1? I don't understand. Is this a reboot? Well, obviously not. They, met, they mentioned Susan the other week. Why is it series 1? Because Disney are pathetic and juvenile. And they hate Doctor Who's past because it doesn't match their their extreme ideology so they had to call it series one even though it's a continuation it is a continuation of every episode of doctor who you've ever seen well maybe not the the one you know when the doctor you know is actually called doctor who that one right i don't think it's canon to that but everything else mostly right and not you know not the silly comic relief thing they did many years ago as well with rowan atkinson but you know what i mean so why is it called Series 1? People are confused. You're confusing people. This is another reason why people are not coming in and interested in Doctor Who. You gaslit people. You know, you did this kind of comic relief thing or Children in Need, whatever it was. You decided to take Davros out of the prosthetics and people didn't like it. 
So they complained to you and you went tough. That's what you said, tough. Your customers, your kingmakers, the people who put you in the position that you're in, Russell, and you partially put yourself in that position by being so good. But you're not good anymore, are you? You've become the enemy of the people. That's what you've happened. You, you were the hero and now you've become the villain. You lived long enough to become the villain and you won't even listen to reason. So good luck on the good ship Doctor Who. The TARDIS is now the Titanic and it's sinking. And that's not just, I don't have an agenda. I love Doctor Who. I believe anyone should be able to play the Doctor because the character can regenerate into any humanoid form. I am fine with it. But just because you're casting a diverse lead, it doesn't mean anyone will do. You've still got to pick the best person for the job. And casting the Doctor is very, very difficult because you've got to find that special person that embodies the Doctor. The Doctor's got to be like that nerdy professor, that friend that leads you into darkness. It's all got to be all personality and intellect. Unfortunately, sadly, the last two actors to play the Doctor, conveniently by accident, they're also diverse actors, haven't felt very clever. Jodie's Doctor didn't feel intelligent. Shooty's Doctor doesn't feel intelligent. Tennant, Capaldi, Smith, Eccleston, and the rest of them all felt like they had the knowledge of the universe, but were always had more to learn. Shooty and Jodie just don't come across very clever. And before anyone starts, it's nothing to do with stereo, stereotypical, bigoted reasons. That's not what I'm saying here. Be very careful. Listen to what people are saying to you. The actors themselves are not, Jody or Shooty are not conveying intelligence because it's not in the script and they're not being encouraged to do so. I'm sure they could convey it if they were told to, but they're not being told to. And this is the problem, the past two doctors. It was, it was like, let's get a black one, right? Let's get a woman, right? That's what they decided to do. That's not me. That's them. And, you know, Chibnall said, let me get my mate Jodie in. Yeah, give her a job, you know. She's not exactly first to get picked for any job, right? She's struggling. I'll get my mate Jodie a job. Everyone will be talking about her. It'll be controversial. It'll be good for Jodes. But Jodie wasn't a great doctor. Now, maybe she could have been if it was in the script, if she was directed in the right way. And the question I'm asking right now is, is Shuti Gatwa a great doctor? Well, we're on episode four of the series. He's done a Christmas special and he was in the last third, in the last act of The Giggle. That's around six episodes, right? My maths was never a strong suit, by the way. But, so he's been in around six episodes. Interestingly enough, he felt okay in the giggle. Better than what we were seeing from drab David Tennant, who was used with the 10th Doctor hat, was the life and soul of the party conveyed intelligence. But of course we had a beta male Doctor, the 14th Doctor, a woke Doctor. So he was boring. Looked tired, old. Hello, Donna, yeah. Well, yes, Donna, yes, of course, yes, yes, of course. Uh, yeah, boring because they had to make him boring, because the next one had to be helped to be relevant. So anyway, Shooty kind of came across okay in that first episode. At least he injected some life into the episode. But then, he wasn't that interesting of a doctor. So is, is he a good doctor? Is he a great doctor? At this moment in time, he's not a great doctor. I'm sorry, he's not. He's not a great doctor. And that's why people already checked out from the third episode of this series. But they came in for Millie, because they know Millie, they trust Millie, and Millie doesn't gaslight people. I've never heard Millie in any article during the marketing drive to gaslight the fans, because that's not, I take it from me, that's not who Millie is. So I don't know how she got away with it, because I don't know if they forced you to do it, or they, obviously Shooty would have to do it. He's the lead, he's agreed to do this, right? He's taken his 30 pieces of silver. But Millie's not really like that. And Millie's really been supported by the fans. People like Millie Gibson. People know Millie Gibson. That's the difference, right? People know Shooty Gatwa as well. He's got his own fans. But there you have it. Two, you know, 
260. 260 million viewers for Doctor Who overnight. That's a lot more. That, that's kind of nearly around the season premiere. So what's the other reason why so many people came out rather than last week? Well, I think people assume this because people are desperate to get to know Millie's character, Ruby Sunday, which we, you know, opportunity, potential miss there because we didn't get that, did we now? He had 45 fucking minutes to finally not reveal her mystery box. That's not what I'm saying here. But to actually tell us who this young woman is. And he didn't do that. So anyway, um, I think people came in because they thought it could fill in some blanks in terms of her mystery box. It didn't. It didn't really tell us anything. We saw a little bit of Anita Dobson. The character says, night do with me, getting back in. And that was it, really. And so, a funny thing, though, funny thing is, so you know the woman in 73 Yards, the one from the distance, that we probably think, what well, we know now, I think, that is old uh, Ruby. Anyway, Russell T. Davies was asked what she was saying to people that made them so afraid. He goes, you know how smug and arrogant he is sometimes, and cocky. I used to think it was a good thing, by the way. And he goes, I'll never tell you what she said. You know why, Russell? Because you don't fucking know, mate. You're a charlatan. You don't know what that woman said because you never had her saying anything else. I can promise you in the script it says, woman says something to people, then they look at Ruby and they run away. As if the woman has told them something so frightening. But this is what RTD's been doing ever since he's come back. He's flattered to deceive. He's pretending he has a plan. He doesn't really have a plan. He didn't have a plan for 73 yards, you can tell from the third act. You can tell that he didn't know. He got to the third act of that story and he went, shit, yes, he actually said shit. And he went, what am I gonna do now? Let me take a drag of my spliff. Oh my God, I know what to do. I'll just reset everything without explaining it. It'll be fine. Those thick fuckers are beyond Twitter going, Oh my God, Russell T Davies is the bestest ever! And that's what he did. Because he's a charlatan. He used to have a plan. He did. He had a plan. And it was a good plan. Bad Wolf was a good plan. I set myself in time. Bad Wolf tells the Ninth Doctor. So I can come and find myself here. Or whatever she says. It was a great arc. Two words. You don't have to waste time on a mystery box. You mention it. Genius, you mention it. Torchwood, you mention it once or twice. It sets up Torchwood. Harold Saxon, you mention it in the Christmas episode, The Runaway Bride. You mention it here, you mention it there. You don't, you can still do police, random police box travel. It is fucking genius, everyone. He used to be a genius. Season four, the bees are going missing. The stars are going out. Boom. You don't have to do... Three or four bloody episodes wasting the your time on de developing your arc. Because they're just words. They're just references. So he is a clever bloke. But he's not acting like a clever bloke. And people don't become dumb and talentless overnight. But it is amazing how new modern entertainment demand this of these creeps. I told you, even before an episode aired, I told you that RTD is pretending to be current day. Do you really think that RTD woke up one morning and said, ooh, that sonic screwdriver looks a bit dangerous? It's fucking Disney. It's fucking Disney. Of course it is. It's Disney who said, hey, you know that sonic screwdriver, Russ? It looks a bit dangerous, doesn't it? Maybe you could do a shitty square thing. You know, like Quantum Leap, when Al is, you know, doing the whole thing? Yeah, maybe, maybe. What was, what was that machine in Quantum Leap? Damn, I can't think of it. Ziggy. Yes, yeah, so and now the sonic screwdriver is fucking Ziggy from Quantum Leap. It is Ziggy, right? Anyway, uh, yeah, Ziggy says there's a 1.5% chance. I don't know why they don't just do that. It'd be more effective. So basically, the sonic screwdriver now looks like Ziggy from Quantum Leap. It's shit. It's Disney, everyone. It's not RTD. That's the reason they took Daft Ross out of the fucking wheelchair.
because we can't have disabled people being evil. Do you believe there's not one, there's not at least 100,000 disabled people, no disrespect to disabled people, right? I know lots of disabled people, lovely people, but I have met a few that are nasty pieces of work, and not because they're disabled, by the way. Let's get that clear. So let's say, I think there's at least, should we say there's at least 1,000 people in the whole world who are disabled in wheelchairs that are nasty pieces of shit? There's just as many, you know, non-disabled people who are nasty pieces of shit. So are we making the assumption here, Russell, that everyone in a wheelchair thinks puppy dogs and flowers? Really? What utter bullshit. It's Disney, everyone, and this geezer is pretending to be Mr. Sensibility, Mr. Woke. And he's not, he's not woke. He, Phil Collinson, and Judy Gardner got Christopher Eccleston blacklisted and what was the man's crime? He was fighting for the rights of his cast and crew. Why do you think Billy Piper goes to conventions and sits with him while he slates RTD? She doesn't say anything because she's clever. She doesn't want her career to end, but she sits there while he's talking and she kind of bites her tongue. She didn't agree with him. She wouldn't be there with him, would she? She doesn't need the money. Billy Piper doesn't need to go to a Doctor Who convention. Billy Piper, is a very wealthy young woman. She did very well from Chris Evans and the divorce and all the work she's had. Billy Piper can literally get any role she wants. So she don't turn up with Christopher Eccleston because she has to, because she doesn't like him. She likes Chris. Chris is, Chris, she doesn't say this publicly, but Chris is her favorite doctor. I know that, Chris is her favorite doctor. She really enjoyed working with him. She liked David, of course she did. But Chris looked after Billy. And Billy would have left with Chris, but she'd agreed to do a second series. It's why Billy left after the second series. So you're dealing with very toxic people, right? It's not Christopher Eccleston that's toxic. They destroyed the man. They destroyed him, and he said it. Now, he's never really given us definitive reasons why. He may be under an NDA, I don't know. I, if I could afford to pay him, I'd get him here on this channel. Technically, I don't know how I would interview someone on my channel. I don't know any of that shit. I don't have editing software. I press record and I talk. I couldn't afford to pay you, Chris, but I love to talk to you on air, right here, once and for all, to know what they did to you. Because even though I respect RTD as a great writer in, you, in his original run of Doctor Who, Christopher Eccleston was blacklisted for being a good guy. Because that's what he is. That's the kind of man he is politically. He's a Man United fan as well. Yeah, mate, all the best people are United fans. Who does RTD support? Cardiff. Anyway, mate, wrong with Cardiff, by the way. I love Wales, but anyway. I don't think RTD loves Wales, considering the last episode. But anyway, it's depiction of Welsh people is very fucking weird, if you ask me. No Welsh person I've ever met, but then maybe he knows different types of Welsh people. Anyway, anyway. And so, um, yeah. So you're dealing with toxic people who are trying to sell themselves as woke and right-minded when they're not. But even if you are woke, I've told you before, there's good woke and bad woke. I've told you that before. Let's not get it twisted. The kind of original Sam Beckett quantum leap, that was very, very woke. But that was good woke. That was good woke. And it was done well. He tried to teach us about, you know, putting love over hate and, you know, teaching people why it's wrong to be racist and hate people for the colour of their skin. But it was done in a good way. I mean, back in the day, even you had racist episodes of Little House of the Prairie. And they kind of taught people who hate people for, for the colour of their skin or because they're gay, why that's wrong. And it was done well. And, and they weren't preaching. Good woke. Today's woke, the Disney woke, is bad woke. It's gaslighting woke. In fact, the kind of woke there is today, it turns people into bigots. It makes people bigots. It takes left-wing young men and makes them Trump voters. How fucking frightening is that? That you're so inept at selling your message that you're turning good young men, moderate left-wingers, into far-right people. And if you're a Trump supporter, I'm sorry. Everyone has a right to believe in what they believe. But I'm just speaking facts here. Don't you agree? Maybe you were once a moderate left and you've become a Trump supporter because of these fucking people. 
This is what happens because they don't know. But back in the day, moderate right wing people, I think, even used to run Hollywood back in the day. And even they, they weren't racists or bigots. This is why they used to push these messages in the right way. And they used to represent good work. So I'm trying to explain to you there is good work. But this is bad work. This is hatred. This is extreme left. It's the extreme left versus the extreme right in politics today. So none of those sides are good. And I respect any political opinion. I mean, if you hate someone for a reason, for a disability or the colour of their skin or because, you know, they're gay or trans, I'll try and sit you down and say, you know, look, there's no reason to be afraid of anyone or to be hateful. You know, judge people on their heart. Get to know people on an individual basis. Don't worry about what their pronouns are. And, you know, at the end of the day, if someone wants to be addressed with a pronoun, and I get it wrong all the time, but I try my best, right? But if someone wants you to call them by their pronoun, it's not an attack, it's not a call to war. Just do it, even if you don't believe in it. If you're 51 and born in the 70s like I am, maybe you think, oh my God. But it's a little thing. And it makes them happy. Just do it. Why not? And I know people say to me, oh my God, Mick, you're... No, I'm not doing it to be an arse. I'm just saying, if I wanted you to call me Ralph instead of Mick, and I said, you know, Mick has bad memories for me, please could you call me Ralph? You'd call me Ralph, wouldn't you? Right? That's all it is. See, it's not a court of war. It's not a big deal. We have to learn to live with each other. And why am I talking about this while I'm doing a video about Doctor Who? Because one is connected to the other. Because RTD has gone really, really, you know, gay and trans messaging. And as I say with, like, um, Yaz's character, is Yaz, isn't it? Who played the trans character, because she is trans. And I think three quarters of that performance and that characterisation were brilliant. I said it the other day, until she went after David Tennant's 14th Doctor for being a male presenting Time Lord. Which is sexist within itself, by the way. There was no need for it. Until then, I thought, this is a good character. She's sweet, I get it. You know, she's been bullied, she's being attacked by people for being trans. It's, uh, and I kind of get it. And you know, dead naming someone, and they were interesting issues to bring up, right? As I say, I'm not incredibly with it. I don't try and virtue signal. This is not what it is. I'm a fair-minded person, no matter my opinions, no matter that I'm a product of my own time as much as anybody else's. Maybe a lot of you watching this video. If someone wants to be called something, or someone wants to be addressed in a certain pronoun, happy to do it. I don't want a medal, I don't think I'm a good person, I'm not perfect, I'm not the best, I'm not the worst neither, as Kevin Costner says in A Perfect World, directed by Clint Eastwood, one of my favourite movies ever. But it's all about respect, right? It's not about anything else. It's not a war. It is not a war. All we have to do is respect each other. But RTD has, you know, no one told RTD we didn't want gay messaging or trans messaging. It's not about that. Or having a trans character, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Having a black doctor, nothing wrong with it. I said the other day, last week, back in my day, my day, like my day's gone right, but the thing is, back, back in my day, we never used to talk about racism, not because we were living in denial, because once you put those people out there and you start talking about it, you make it a bigger thing than what it is. As I say, you turn more people into bigots. Because people feel like you're targeting everyone. Every kind of straight white male seems to be accused as being a bigot and being a problem these days. They're making children, little boys, apologise to little girls in school for what the cavemen did to women. That's right. And I know of a story about a year ago where a little girl stood up and said, because it was a female teacher doing this, and the little girl, right, said, Miss, don't be so ridiculous. You know, whatever the kid's name was, Ralph wasn't even alive in the caveman days. Why should he say sorry to us? And she was sent outside. And it was a big deal. I tell you, this was a big deal in this school. And the parents had to come down, and the school had to backtrack, and they never did it again. Because this little kid, this girl, by the way, she was a girl, not a boy. The boy was willing to stand up and do it. He didn't know what was going on. He was scared and confused. It was disgusting. But, and I'm changing the subject, but it's all connected to what RTD's doing. Because 
all of a sudden we're talking about you know you know you know bigoted people you know um you know gay phobic people homophobic people we're talking about racists during the marketing drive for doctor who and you see what you do you cause negativity because people feel you're calling us all homophobes and bigots and racists it's a good look it is a good look now i know why you did it because you feel controversy sells it hasn't worked out for you because here's the truth about ratings doctor who should at least be getting four million live viewers even if the streaming is you know even if you can stream it before you can watch it live and that's all d plus is for anyway because they wanted to stream it before the bbc aired it but anyway because of spiders and things like that i understand that this is why the disney bbc kind of thing partnership isn't really working it's not working at all i think disney will kind of you know not be involved in the season three but i could be wrong i've been wrong once or twice this decade <laughs> but yeah so i think doctor who should be getting four million overnight and then like with iplayer you get about another million or so or just over so i think anything five million and above is respectable now I think certain people coming from a certain point of view will basically say anything is bad and Doctor Who is doomed, RIP Doctor Who. And I've been saying RIP Doctor Who because at this moment in time, I believe it is RIP Doctor Who. I don't see a way back. But all it needs is someone running the show that wants to change the show again and wants to do something a little bit different because there's lots of brilliant different things to do. I've told you about my story, Saving Judy Garland. Imagine that story in an episode of Doctor Who. The doctor meeting Judy Garland while she's making the Wizard of Oz. He lands on the yellow brick road on the actual soundstage. Imagine that. How brilliant. What a story you could fucking tell. But no one's going to do that because they're not interested in giving you great time traveling adventures, great Doctor Who. It's about the messaging. It's about what goes into a child's head. I just said this on another social media platform. We're draining the minds of our young people. I would never be young today. They've got all this information in their heads all day via social media. Then when they go to the cinema, it's being fired into them. When they watch their television, it's being fired into them. So these kids don't get a rest. No wonder they're suffering. I've said it before. No wonder they're suffering with anxiety and depression and God knows what else. They can't even watch an episode of Doctor Who without being funneled with negative energy. It's not healthy. When we grew up, right, we had school and a home. I went to school, did my lessons, come home, put the telly on, I could escape. Or I would be taken to the cinema to escape. But it's changed. We had better childhoods generally when we were growing up. These days, they're just, it's, it's messaging, it's messaging. You know, give me, tell me, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? It's constant all the time. And Doctor Who is the most guilty party of them all. And that's, the, that's why people ain't coming in. That's why parents will not allow their kids to watch Doctor Who. But if they had a villain in a dress, no one cares. And it was a good villain and it was done properly. If this villain wasn't telling a 1923 musician, I'm a them or a they, right? having a go at someone in 19 fucking 23 for not knowing someone's gender pronoun when that hadn't even been thought of in 19 fucking 23 i don't get what you're trying to say rtd i kind of do but it's pretty pathetic and small-minded do you get me and this is what entertainment is it's not just rtd they're all doing this now rtd is trying to hammer it home but he's not really a man who believes in any of this. He's playing a role for Disney. And everyone's see, seeing through it. This is the reason why nobody goes to cinema anymore. We don't trust you. This is why people aren't watching Doctor Who anymore. We don't like you or trust you. So to answer the question, Shuti Gatwa isn't a very good doctor. But here's some good news. There are many, many thousands of actors in Shuti's demographic that would have been a better doctor than Shooty. There were thousands of um, people in Jodie Whittaker's demographic that would have been a better doctor. Unfortunately for them, they weren't unfortunate. They, you know, they weren't fortunate or unfortunate enough 
to be Chris Chibnall, the Doctor Who showrunners at the time, best pal. Because that's how entertainment works, everyone. So we continue to see entertainment die. Because I believe until the good 10% are still in this entertainment industry move away outside and rebuild something small of their own, we're going to continue the same way.